Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. My name is Mackie Hall and today we're going to teach you how to make a basic type logo using Adobe Illustrator 2020. What is a type logo? A type logo is the most simple form of logo out there. It's text-based, it's easy to read, it's easy to understand. Some examples include Coke, IBM, Disney, Google, and more. Here's a look at our design. Notice that we've included a ribbon in our piece. The reason we did that is because it's a fundamental design element and they're just everywhere. Let's get started, shall we? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document in Adobe Illustrator. When we do so, we're going to make our page width 1000 points and our height 1000 points as well. In our page layout, we are going to select Essentials. If you don't know where that is, it's on the top right of the top bar. Once we're set with that, we're going to select our rectangle tool and we're going to click anywhere on our page. We're going to create a rectangle that's 300 points wide by 40 points tall. We're going to cut and paste so that the element lands on the middle of our page. From there, what we're going to do is we are going to select our fill and find a light blue fill. That works pretty good, about just like that. Then we're going to find and select a dark blue stroke. Maybe something like that. From there we're going to increase our stroke to two points. If we click off our element by selecting our selection tool, we'll have a piece that looks just like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select our rectangle and we're going to copy and paste it in back we're going to hold our shift key and use our directional arrows to bring the piece down so it's clear of the top element. We're going to do it again. We're going to copy and paste in back, again holding our shift key, and we will bring our next rectangle down about that same distance. The reason we're using our shift key along with our directional arrows is because by doing so, we move elements down 10 points at a time. Uh, if we don't hold our shift key down, we move our elements around one point at a time. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select our direct select tool. And we're going to drag across the right side of our rectangles. This selects the anchor points in the area that I dragged over. The next thing we're going to do, is we're going to hold our shift key down again, and we're going to arrow over more or less about like that. Finally, we're going to use our direct select tool to drag across our bottom rectangle and arrow over a few times holding our shift key down so that it looks more or less like that. Next step, drag across our middle rectangle, hold the shift key down and arrow up once. You'll notice what we've done so far with our rectangles is we've started creating the right side elements of our ribbon. To finish it out, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to grab either our select or direct select tools. We're going to click on our bottom rectangle and then we're going to select our pen tool. We're going to hover over the edge of our third rectangle and we're going to click on it. What we've done is we've added an anchor point to the outside of our rectangle. If we hold our shift key down, arrow over twice, note that we've created a cut in our rectangle. Basically, we've created all the shapes needed to make our ribbon. We'll select the middle shape that we've created, hold our shift key down, and arrow over our third shape. From here, what we'll need to do is we'll need to duplicate this shape. So we're going to select everything. And then what we're going to do is we are going to either press O on our keyboard or click and hold over our rotate tool till our reflect tool becomes visible. We're going to click on that and then double click on the reflect tool on our left toolbar. We're going to make sure our axis is set to vertical. Our angle is to 90 degrees and then we are going to click copy. From there, we're going to hold our shift key down, arrow to the right until 
we are underneath the right side of our top rectangle. Next step, we're going to grab our select tool, drag across both of our shapes underneath our rectangle, hold our shift key down again, and arrow up until, until we are underneath our first rectangle. If we click off of it, you'll note we've created our ribbon. We've got a bent ribbon in this shape right here, but we're not really worried about that right now. What we're going to concern ourselves with is the type itself. So we're going to start with using the basics. We'll click our type tool and anywhere on our page, we'll click and write using the basics. From here, we'll select all of our type. Then we'll select Bebis from our type list. If you don't have Bebis, you can go to fontsquirrel.com and there it's available as a free download. Next thing we're going to do is size our typeface up until it fits the area that we are going to fill. From there, we're going to select our direct select tool once again and we're going to drag inside our ribbon. Then we're going to use our directional keys to position it just right. I think that's pretty close right there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change our type fill to white. And we have completed our ribbon. Looking at this, we are going to step over to type logo. We're going to select our type tool once again. We're going to click above our ribbon and we are going to write type logo. Again, we'll select all of our type and we'll increase the size until it fits. Until it fits above our ribbon perfectly. Close right there, let's size it up just a little bit more. Good enough. Next, we'll position it until it fits our area just right. I don't want to keep my type logo with a black fill and no stroke. Instead, what I want to do, I want to have my stroke and fill match the ribbon itself. So with my type selected, I will select my eyedropper tool, then click on the rectangle below it. Looks good. From here, I'm going to select my type logo and swap my stroke and my fill. Once I've done that, I want to stretch my type out just a little bit. The way I'll do that is I will select my type logo words, and then I will hover over and select my free transform tool. From here, I'm going to hover over the top of the box that I've created around my typeface, and I'm just going to drag up just a little bit. I'll select my select tool and click off my element, and then maybe arrow down my type to fit it just right. From here, I will select all the elements and group them together. Once done with this piece right here, once done, I'll select Effect, Warp, and Arc. Note that the starting bend for the arc is 50%. I'm going to take that down to 20% and preview that. I think that's a good look right there, so I'll select OK. Looks good. The last thing I'm going to do if I click over to my original image is I will write in and format design a radical. I'll select my type tool and, and anywhere above the design I've created, I will click and write in design a radical. Once done, I'll select all my type center it, then select Futura Standard from our type list. From our character window, I'm going to select the menu and I will select all caps. Next step, I will size it down to fit snugly above type logo. That's about the right size right there. 
then I'm going to arrow it down a safe distance. To get this right, I'm going to zoom in just a little. The way I do that is I will hold my control key and press the plus sign. And that will allow me to zoom in. Once I've done that, I will select Effect, Warp, and Arc once again. Notice that, the, notice that the effect has the same bend as the last time you applied the effect. This time what I want to do is I want to reduce that bend so that it matches the bend of the type logo beneath it. So I'll move it down to 8%. Click on OK. And that works just fine. Finally, I'll arrow down to get the look that I desire. If I zoom out, we can see the logo that we've created. Last step, we'll select all of our elements, and group them together. So there's our type logo. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the questions below. Otherwise, give me a like or subscribe for more videos. See you next time.